Hello, bonjour, hola, welcome to Languages. I'm Mrs. Cola Lewis, I'm subject leader of Languages, and along with my team, Mr. Cola Lewis, Mr. Whittington, Mrs. Lennon, and Mrs. Allison, I am pleased to present for GCSE Languages. I'd love to be fluent in any other language, it's boring isn't it, only not knowing one language. I do want to travel like quite a bit. It is nice to kind of respect the culture that you go and visit. Most people in the UK only speak English, around two thirds in fact. But a recent survey by the British Council has found one in four people actually regret never learning another language. So what languages can you speak? I speak a bit of Japanese. Yeah, I speak uh, Somali. I speak Patwa and a bit of Punjabi as well. I'd love to be fluent in any other language. It's boring, isn't it? Only not knowing one language. So I would like to like improve my Spanish in the future because I'm not using it too frequently since I'm in the UK. I do want to travel like quite a bit, like when I've got more funds. <laughs> it is nice to kind of respect the culture that you go and visit. The UK is very multicultural. You know, there's a lot of different languages being spoken. The UK seems like a, a country that's open to learning new languages. So why do students choose to study languages? I have been lucky enough to have four students with me today who are telling you why they have chosen to do G language GCSEs. Hi, I'm Hannah. I chose to do a foreign language for GCSE as I wanted to broaden my opportunities to travel and potentially live and work in a different country. I found it hard to pick what I wanted to do for GCSE, but I found that doing a language gives you confidence and broadens your outlook on different cultures. Hi, I'm Jack. I decided to do a language at GCSE as it opens so many doors for the future if you're able to speak another language. It is also a great way to learn more about a different culture of which you are not exposed to. Hi, I'm Daisy. I picked a language GCSE because I wanted to learn a new language as well as a new culture. I really wanted to learn more about other countries and how their cultures are so unique and different to our own. Hi, I'm Laurie. I chose a language for GCSE because I believe it's one of the most rewarding subjects. Unlike other lessons, when learning a language you are actually learning a skill that can be used for your future life. There is a vast array of career opportunities open to linguists, ranging from work with well-known multinational companies to international organisations or charities. These are exciting opportunities, often involving travel abroad in almost every sector. You are freeing your career options by choosing languages. So what topics do we study at GCSE languages? Well, we follow the Edexcel exam board at GCSE and this is broken down into five themes. Theme one is all about identity and culture. So we discuss family and relationships along with use of social media and technology in that topic. Theme two is local area holiday and travel, just like the tin says, everything to do about being at homes and going away on holiday. Theme three is school, so everything about the past tense, so like your primary school, your current school experiences and what you hope to aspire to in the future. And that links in then into theme four, which are your future aspirations, study and work. So what do you aspire to, to do in the future? And then to finish off, we do theme five, which are international and global dimensions. So we look into topics such as the environment and helping out in other countries. So what does the assessment at GCSE look like? Well, it's broken down into a foundation and higher tier, but we wouldn't make that selection until later on in year 11. So 
it's broken down into our four key skills, which are listening, reading, speaking and writing. And those are equally weighted at 25% to make up your total of your GCSE grade. So at listening, students are assessed on their understanding of a standard spoken language by one or more speakers in a range of social settings. And in reading, similarly, students are assessed on their understanding of a written language across a range of different types of texts. These could include advertisements, emails, letters, articles or literature texts. In speaking, that is broken down into four different tasks. So task one, a role play card and task two, a photo card is being prepared 12 minutes before the actual exam where students can see the cards and prepare what we're going to be able to say. And again, we will have had lots and lots of practice before the actual exam date in June in year 11. Task three is a student presentation. So the student would have prepared something in class a couple of months before already, um, which is up to a minute long on a chosen theme from the student. And then task four is just a general conversation about the different themes from theme one to theme five. The writing is broken down. So for foundation students, they will have four tasks ranging from 20 words on a picture through to 40 words on a theme and then finishing off with 80 to 90 words on a theme and then right at the end we have a translation of five sentences. Higher looks slightly different with the start of task one which is going to be the same task as it was for the foundation students the 80 to 90 words on a theme. Task two is 130 words on a theme, which we usually can write within a half an hour. So not to worry about that bit. And then task three is translation of a short paragraph. So things we've already been doing in lesson and looking at different sentences and little paragraphs, it probably will not be any longer to what we've already been doing in year nine. So nothing to be worried about. So if you have some look at some frequently asked questions of what support do you offer? Well, we have a dedicated and approachable teachers and we are all specialists in our language. We offer detailed online vocabulary courses and all teachers do regular marking and feedback so the students have known what they've done really well at and what things they might need to improve for some further study. We also do fortnightly sessions in our purpose-built language lab to develop speaking and listening skills and do our vocabulary recall in those two. And then we also provide revision guides to make it a little bit simpler of what to revise, when to revise and how to revise them. So what should you bring to do a GCSE language? What are the course requirements? Well, languages open your world onto other cultures. So curiosity is essential. Be ready to have a go and learn from your mistakes, but also be supportive of each other and everyone in the class and be committed to learning your vocabulary each week, of course. So another thing we get asked is, will there be any cultural experiences? So within our language lessons, we include various cultural experiences such as studying poems and fables, exploring festivals, which get celebrated throughout the year. And we take an interest in music and film, of course, and we can't miss out on those interesting foods they have in different cultures. So from time to time, we also do some food tasting.
We will continue with our pen friends who we write to regularly and we've had trips in the past and now that COVID has lifted restrictions, we can also resume those cultural experiences that way. In the past, we've explored the following. In Germany, we've been to the Rhine Valley, Cologne, Düsseldorf, Berlin and Munich. And in France, we have been to Paris, Strasbourg, Morlaix, Bayeux and Mont Saint-Michel and Lille. And to Spain, our most recent one has been to Gijon and Oviedo. So if you would like any further information about this course, please contact myself, Mrs. Cola Lewis, subject leader of languages on email, which is vcola at .uk, Or likewise, you can go and speak with any of your languages teacher if you want to see some past papers of um, listening, speaking, reading or writing, or want to see some examples of work which your year 10 or year 11 students have been working on. OK. Hopefully see you soon. Tschüss, au revoir, adios.